All right, in this video, I'm going to cover uh, just a couple things for DF Aggregator uh, in the Kraken SDR to run everything offline uh, to include the map data. Uh, because I didn't have a lot of time to set up real systems, we're going to use RDF Sim. And so just pair this video with previous videos. Uh, I guess I could uh, put a link to one here that'll pop up. I uh, recommend watching it. It'll show you how to do the map data a little more in depth than what I'm going to do at at the moment. Also, uh, I have a whole bunch of uh, new equipment, uh, new SDRs, well, more like three of them, and uh, so some exciting things coming. But I wanted to do this before I forgot about it. So here we are with Dragon OS. Um, I'm going to download this RDF Sim. And we'll just put it right in, and it'll make sense while I'm doing this here in a second. You'll need one thing I noticed because uh, I tried this earlier with RDF Sim. If you look at the requirements, uh, you just need I installed it system wide, install and paste. That was the only thing I needed. And so we'll get that out of the way for a second. <clears throat> so you can see it's an RDF simulator for the Kerberos SDR, but it's also the same thing, uh, same setup for the uh, Kraken SDR. Going to give you the same information to simulate having multiple systems set up. Uh, so I don't know, say for some reason you needed to direction find a transmitter of some sort, uh, you could have multiple systems. As long as you have those networked back to one central location, in this case, what you're seeing on the screen, just pretend that's the one central location. Uh, it is going to reach out over the network to the Kerberos or the Kraken SDR's internal web page that's running on it, and it's going to grab information and pull it back. And uh, so I wanted to take that a step further, and of course have the DF aggregator and the mapping engine Cesium. Um, to the point where it could have offline map data. Okay, so let's see. Um, <clears throat> in Dragon OS, I added this uh, Dragon Spectrum Awareness Manager. I guess you can't really read it unless you widen it up there. So we need to start, uh, we're going to start GeoServer. And we're also going to take a look at something real quick here. So this is, uh, I talked about it in a previous video, QGIS. And then I have the uh, Latin Long plugin and then the Tile Plus plugin. And so that's what enabled me to pull this map data and essentially create an image. And just a real quick recap. So you got your image up here. If I go Layer save as what I've been doing now rendered image I don't need the VRT uh, give it a file name I've just been putting them on the desktop I'll just do like test you know five it'll add the dot uh, tiff when it saves it I do map can canvas extent which seems to you know encapsulate this the canvas here I do the horizontal I typically just punch in one and one and then this time I did try and do a uh, high compression and I don't, yeah, I didn't change anything else. You hit OK. It'll make something about can't verify settings, but typically it, you'll see a progress bar at the bottom and it'll be making that TIFF image. So again, I, I showed that in a previous video. So now I have that file. And we're going to go, we'll go localhost geo server or localhost 8080 geo server and it's admin. Geo server is the default username and password. Come over here to stores, and I basically just been adding a new store. Come down GeoTIFF. If you created a, a workspace unique one, you'd use that. I just was using this Tiger. And let me think here. I don't think I put this test four in yet. I'll just call it test four. to 
plus 4 and let me think I'll hit save it'll come here I'll say publish save there we go so we've got tests test 3 test 4 let's see 3 4 where's my test 2 at that later but so anyways you're running the geo server you've got your map data in there let me edit map layers this is all kind of manual right now I'm going to come down and I am going to find I guess I could have made it stick out a little bit more but this uh, WMS WMS imagery layer uh, little blurb of code I added here so you can see I've just been adding so what I'll do is do comma tiger do test four so I've got poly landmarks tiger roads which I don't really need tiger three tiger tiger test and test four not even sure where well, this doesn't necessarily correlate to the name of the file, so I could have just called this test, maybe. All right, let's see. Save. We're going to start. Actually, we're going to create a database, and we'll just call this DF Sim 2. Select database, DF Sim 2. Okay, and let's st uh, let's start DF aggregator. Okay, and then the other thing we're gonna do, and now it'll make sense why we did the RDF sim. Let's see. So we need to specify a JSON file. So this is going to um, simulate having three. Uh, receivers three just think of them as three Kraken SDR receivers with that JSON file so you could really use this uh, it's pretty handy to practice with uh, some direction finding or maybe make a captured flag event or something like that but let's do dash J and the example JSON I think there you can even have real GPS information feeding in on simulated uh, receivers so they look like they're driving around and I'll just make a whatever I'll just do a different port here okay so that's running DF aggregator is running so we'll go localhost 8081 for DF aggregator and so we can see now this starts in uh, an offline base map but you can see the map data that I've pieced together here all coming from the geo server so if you look um, kind of somewhere here in the back you'll see it uh, pulling from the geo server and so it'll get pretty you know detailed depending on how I saved it so what I want to do now is <clears throat> okay so we'll go to localhost 4444 which is the port I put it's a single mobile transmitter with a regular TX cycle of one minute active three minutes idles. So how do we what do we do here? Click on let's do the DF alpha. We'll get it um, yeah. We'll get its URL here. Let's come back. Let's add this. Okay. Let's come back. We'll add Bravo. And you can see him getting on the map there. 
and hopefully I got enough map data here to cover the third one. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I got three on there. Let's go ahead and close this out. We'll start up the receivers. And so now, once that transmitter starts transmitting, you're going to see this is essentially replicating just as if these were, um, yeah, real Kraken SDRs. So there you go. Uh, completely offline. So when the transmitter comes back on, And you may have to refresh to get the ellipse and the uh, plots. Let's look. Let's see what we got here. So again, this is mobile, a mobile transmitter. areas of interest that you can add and exclusion areas so really kinda quick I just wanted to show alright look uh, if you want to run complete offline have a local network or some other way that you have uh, these uh, Kraken SDRs um, you can do the direction finding and run the map data offline so Hopefully that uh, that's helpful and uh, all right thanks.